Well, I suppose it's partly that and also partly the fact that people can and technology's moved on to the point where you can talk to your business colleagues almost as easily um, over a computer as you can in person. So I think the two of them have combined to put some tension and also I think you know, there's, there is a lot of competitive pressure in, in the business markets. But uh, the point you make around leisure travel, yes, I think it is back and we've seen that coming through. Um, you know, in line with what uh, WTM says, we've seen um, demand on a light for light basis coming back almost to 2019 levels and on a, vol on a value basis, just increase it. Revenge travel. I mean, people wanted to get back out there. They wanted to go to places they were not allowed to go to during COVID, during lockdown, and even that they still had the lockdowns lifted, concerned that they might catch COVID or there would be disruptions if they traveled somewhere. What's hot now? Because at the same time, we've got credit costs that have gone up. So are people still traveling as far and uh, to, to more expensive places or is there a subtle shift in behaviors? Well, I, th I think there are a couple of shifts in behavior. I mean, over this summer, where the cost of living crisis was felt, we did see people shopping around more, looking for options more than perhaps they had, and looking at where they could go on in terms of destinations and perhaps durations. So changing those a little bit to try and make sure they got value for money. But what we didn't see, thankfully, was actually as a part of the cost of living crisis, a, a decrease in the demand for holidays. People still, I think, value, particularly after COVID, being able to spend sort of time with their family and friends in places that they love going to. We were talking this morning uh, with Ryanair about summer bookings and that, you know, already people have placed their bets, they've booked tickets, they're going places. But to me, that is almost a sign of some weakness because the old travel market, you book last minute to get a discount. This travel market, if you book in advance, you get the cheaper prices. So isn't that a sign of a price sensitive customer? I think it is also, I think the customer is price sensitive. So I think on the one hand, customers definitely want to go on holiday and spend time with their family away. On the other hand, they are looking for deals and they are really having a look around to make sure that they've got a right deal. And a lot of them are betting that the tensions in the travel market might mean that prices go up towards summer as opposed to going down towards summer. Um, and I, I think we are seeing some of that coming through. Equally, we're also seeing the other side of it where our, our people are looking around and trying to find the right place for them to be able to go to some of the perhaps less well-known destinations like Northern Africa or perhaps even parts of Eastern Europe are now coming on as, as um, more value-led destinations. Um, is the former point wise given current tensions? Now I know there are an amazing number of safe places in North Africa but given the whole MENA region, Middle East, North Africa, it is more tense given the events we're seeing uh, in Gaza and Israel now, do, do tra just traveling to certain countries in the Middle East and North Africa, should it come with a warning for consumers? Well, I think the, the Foreign Office is, is going to be looking at that and hopefully carry well, I'm on with they're the, already looking at it. I, I, do, I do indeed hope so. Um, and I'm sure that uh, we'll see changes in travel advice from the Foreign Office coming through to reflect that. Mm. But I do also think that um, you know, certainly places, and there are places in North Africa that are a long way from any areas of conflict. Sure. Um, and I think, it, you know, we're, we're also seeing, you know, a drop in demand when we see some, something happen. But then quite quickly, people understand the politics of it and the geopolitics of it. And uh, let me respond. ask you very specifically about Egypt as well. It's a very, very popular destination for all kinds of European visitors as well. Uh, Red Sea resorts are very, very popular as well. How does it feel in terms of the demand for Egypt holidays at the moment? And are you surprised at what you're seeing? Well, funnily enough, that was the example that I had in mind. We yeah. did see a small drop in demand as the war broke out. And then actually we've seen the demand rebound again. So, you know, I, I think there was some level of cost in there, but also actually the number of destinations you can travel to over the winter, and particularly with the, you know, projections around a very damp rest of the year, I think people have sort of looked at it and assessed it and said, actually, we'll carry on going. Yeah.